Hey everyone, welcome to Sunshine Hills Church Online. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas yesterday, and we are so glad you're joining with us today on Boxing Day. Pastor Tom is here to bring the word, and in person today, we are going to be celebrating with a number of individuals who are choosing to be water baptized. It's a wonderful day for them, a celebration for us as a church as these people are choosing to follow Jesus in water baptism and to celebrate and declare um, their faith in him today. So we just want to let you know of that. It's a big, momentous occasion for us as a church, something to be celebrated for sure. Uh, some announcements before we get into the message and all that comes with that. Next Sunday, January the 2nd, is going to be Pastor Tom's outgoing pastoral address. This is a word that he's been working on for our church for a while, what he wants to impart to us before he heads into the next phase of what God has in store for him in his life and his ministry. Uh, so we want to encourage you to be a part of that. We, In order to accommodate everybody who wants to be a part of that Sunday, we are going to have two services, one at 9.30 a.m. and one at 11.15 a.m. We will also be live streaming the message in the 9.30 a.m. service uh, on our YouTube channel. So we want to make sure that everybody who wants to be a part of this important a momentous day for Pastor Tom is able to either participate in person or online via live stream. If you have any questions, be sure to connect with myself or Pastor Danny Hunt. We'll be sure to let you know how best to uh, engage with that service. Uh, also, want to let you know that coming up in January is the Foursquare Gospel Church of Canada National Week of Prayer and Fasting. That runs Monday, January the 10th to Sunday, January the 16th. We're going to have things happening every day that week as we join together as a local church with our national church and our Foursquare churches across Canada in prayer. Uh, so there will be more details coming up. I guess let you know on the Monday the 10th, there's going to be a Zoom prayer meeting online. On Sunday the 16th, we're going to have a worship and prayer night in person at the church church that evening, and we have some other things lined up for each day. More details to come. We just want to encourage you to put us some time aside that week as we purpose to join together in prayer and fasting. Also want to let you know, coming up at the beginning of February, City Dream Center, a local ministry that we've been supporting over the years, are going to be putting together and hosting their very first City Dream Center Impact Conference, a chance to just uh, vocalize and express the big dreams that God has laid in our heart with like-minded people and inspire one another towards all that God has in store for us. So that's going to be the first weekend of February. It's the Friday evening and the Saturday. Uh, more details coming, and we will be posting all the information regarding the conference and how to register on all all of our social media platforms to be sure to check Facebook, weekly email, etc. for how to get involved with that. Are you ready? Are you excited? The announcements are done and church starts now. Well, here we are, December 26th. I love the fact that we can be together, whether we're watching on video or whether we're here in the building. What's wonderful is that we have the privilege of being able to participate in something that goes back to the very time of Jesus. Jesus, when he walked the face of the planet, he talked about the importance of water baptism. And so today, I want to encourage you, if you have been water baptized, this is an opportunity for you to reconnect with what you did. Maybe it was a long time ago. Perhaps you have yet to take this important step of obedience. My hope is that I can encourage you because I, I really believe with all of my heart that any time that we walk in obedience, there is always a blessing that comes with that. Perhaps you've got some questions, and my hope is that I will be able to uh, give you some scriptures that will help you to be able to make an informed decision. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that we celebrated yesterday, Lord, Christmas, when we acknowledge the fact that you became flesh and you dwelt amongst us. We thank you that the God out there, i.e. where you inhabit eternity, that you interjected yourself into human, uh, the human experience. You showed us a better way. As we talk about water baptism, this is one place where we have a very tangible summary of the message of the good news of the gospel and what Jesus came to do when he walked amongst us. We pray, God, that you'll give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. My text this morning is out of Paul's uh, writings to the Colossians, and it's found in Colossians 2.12, and it says, Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. This is a very wonderful picture of 
what baptism is all about, that Paul talks about the fact that we were buried with Jesus in water baptism. And you say, well, what does that look like? We're going to unpack that. And then we were raised in newness of life through what Jesus did for us. That is, in summary, the gospel. As we look through this, I want to just say that Sunshine Hills, um, for the last 40 years, and I have absolute confidence that going into the, the new uh, leadership, that it will stay the same, that we have always endeavored to follow not human tradition or we don't do something because the National Force Work Gospel Church of Canada makes some sort of edict, but we have endeavored always to follow the pattern of Scripture. We say, where is that in Scripture and why is that important? So I am not talking to you about my opinion this morning or this evening. I am not doing something that is an edict from some human endeavor or some human institution. But I'm going to share with you that Jesus himself, when he walked the face of the planet, that he gave a commandment, an ordinance he put in place that was to be done. He said, I want you to repent and be baptized. Water baptism is important for lots of reasons. Again, one of those things is that we are called to be authentic witnesses of Jesus. So as we gather here in the building, and um, I hope that you'll be able to see this uh, if you're online, that there will be people this morning that will be following Jesus into the waters of baptism. And we'll see that it is a public declaration. Sometimes people say, well, is there de what, what, what represents a spiritual quorum? Well, it says in front of somebody. So if there's one person that's water baptizing you and, and you're on the other end, you're the, baptize, the person being baptized, then there is a public declaration in front of somebody else and God and saying, I am a follower of Jesus. We see that it is an outward sign of an inward work. I remember being water baptized when I was 10 years old, and you've heard this ad nauseum. I'm now 65, so that was almost 45 years ago. I still remember that. It was a one-time event for me. You know, you could say, well, I know more about Jesus, and how many times should I be water baptized? It is a one-time commitment to say, I am identifying with Jesus and his death, his burial, and his resurrection, but working of that out takes a lifetime. So if you're waiting and saying, well, I need to be water baptized because I know more than I did when I was 10. Well, then you'll know more about Jesus when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And if you live to 100, it symbolizes a change that has already taken place. We read that in Colossians chapter 2 and uh, verse 12. Also, just as a reference, uh, Romans 6, 3 to 4. We accept Jesus in our hearts. It's a private thing. So it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, for it, with our heart we believe and with our mouth we confess. In our practice here at Sunshine Hills, we have expressed the fact that when you believe, you make a decision, you give your heart to Jesus. That is a, a personal thing. You know, sometimes people say, well, it doesn't count unless it's in a church building where there's a lot of people to witness. Like, I always say, how does that play out in real life? Can you imagine you're, you're dealing with your next-door neighbor or somebody, and you, you uh, help them walk through the what we call the sinner's prayer, where they acknowledge their sin, they invite Jesus into their heart. If it's to make it good, you got to go out into the out into the front lawn and said, "Hey, I need somebody to witness this." So it is with your heart you believe, but with your mouth you confess. So as people are going through the waters of baptism, they are in fact making a public declaration of something that has happened and we always encourage people to somehow make a statement sometimes people say well i'm very you know i'm shy whatever so i'll say hey are you doing this because you love jesus yes have you invited him into your heart yes do you believe that he died for your sins yes and that you're pledging yourself to be a follower of jesus not in the facebook sense but in the true sense of the word yes we accept so these three things jesus death his burial, and his resurrection. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So Jesus died according to the scriptures, and he was buried. And so that's very important. You don't bury somebody that hasn't died. And that is one of the very um, uh, pivots of the whole gospel. If Jesus didn't die, 
He and he couldn't have been the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And if he didn't rise from the dead, he couldn't be God. So you only bury somebody that's dead. And it says, and Jesus died and he was buried and then he rose and he appeared. So we see then that by Jesus appearing to people post resurrection, that they then became eyewitnesses. So I love this about water baptism that we can be and are his eyewitnesses. Water baptism is also a statement of repentance. It is the acknowledgement that we need to change, that the way that we've been living our life, it hasn't been working. I've been reading through God's words translation, and I, I quite like it most of the time. Sometimes I don't, but I really like when we see this word repentance, uh, it's rendered change the way you think and act. I like that. It's changing our thought processes. The Bible talks about the fact that Jesus is changing and transforming us by the power of his Holy Spirit, that it's not behavior, but it's belief. And as we believe, we change. Change the way you think and act. And so Jesus, in Mark 1, 14 and 15, Jesus said, I want you to go, and he says, repent and be baptized. So it is a commandment. It is not a suggestion. Now, I'm not here to bang on you. I'm not here to throw you under the bus. But I want you to know that if you have yet to take this step of water baptism since you believed, I want to say with everything that I can, I want to encourage you to follow the Lord. There is always blessing that comes with obedience. We see that this pattern was also followed in the book of Acts when the, the disciples were all together and the Holy Spirit fell upon them in this new way that Jesus promised. What happened was there was thousands of people who made decisions and it says that they heard the good news, they repented of their sins, and then they were water baptized. It was all a kind of a package deal here. Now, I want to come back around on this. Sometimes people say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a good enough Christian yet, or I, I don't know enough, and I'll wait until, you know, God has worked something more in my life until I take this step. That is not a biblical pattern. The biblical pattern was people heard, they repented, and they were water baptized. And so what happens is that when we are obedient, what happens is it opens up a new understanding that God has a, a, a clear pathway to our hearts and to our minds. So the reality is, is that it's kind of like cleaning up the house and then calling the cleaners in. Jesus is standing there with a bucket and a mop, and he's saying, let me into your heart as well. I've got all this stuff, you know, that needs to be cleaned up before you come in. Jesus says, I'm here to help you. So that's an important thing. So if you're waiting till you're holy enough, you'll be waiting a long time. Jesus is at work in you, and as you take this step of water baptism, as we watch these people are going to be water baptized today, they are opening the door and saying, Jesus, come in and help me. Now, here's some important truths I always think is important to back things up. First of all, water baptism and the water that you are baptized in has no mystical quality about it that somehow cleanses you from your sin nature. No, it is an expression of the fact that the blood of Jesus has cleansed you from all sin and all unrighteousness. So water baptism does not make you a Christian. It does not save you. You are saved by faith not by works. And so people say, well, you got to be water baptized to be a Christian. No, I would say this. You're a Christian. You want to be water baptized. The water baptism, again, is this outward, physical, public declaration of something that has already happened to you. Baptism should always be seen as an ongoing thing. Though you were water baptized at some point in the past, or hopefully in the future if you haven't been water baptized yet, that the reality is, is that you are a person in process. It's part of that whole idea of sanctification. It's a big 50 cent word, but sanctification is the Holy Spirit quickening to us to become more like Jesus. Sometimes we confuse the salvation message with the sanctification message. Salvation is what Jesus did for you on the cross. Hallelujah. Sanctification is that ongoing process and by following Jesus in his example of water baptism, we are, in fact, taking a step towards allowing him to be truly Lord of our life. Now, Jesus, 
uh, was the one who was the model. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, we have the account, the eyewitness account of Jesus' water baptism. So I'll tell you the story. Jesus uh, went to where John the Baptist was baptizing people. Jesus shows up and says, I, need to, I want to be baptized. And John says, well, boy, I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus says, no, permit this because I want to fulfill all righteousness. What I love about Jesus is that as the model, he doesn't say, don't do as I say, do as I do. So in a very real sense, Jesus was the sinless lamb of God. He did not need to repent. He did not need forgiveness for sins. He was the perfect lamb of God. But he was saying, I want to give you a preview of my mission. This is right at the very beginning of Jesus' earthly public ministry. So Jesus went down under the waters of baptism, and, and, and symbolically, he went down, and he was buried, and he comes up in resurrection power. Now, I can tell you story after story after story about how when people take this step of obedience, that there is a tangible and physical an emotional and spiritual release. And so again, why wouldn't we want to follow Jesus? We need to understand that Jesus, he was prefiguring, he was giving us a preview of what it is that he came to do. He came to die on the cross for my sins and for yours. You can never be more of a Christian than the moment you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. You can be more like Jesus. It says we are being daily conformed and transformed by the power of his Holy Spirit. Water baptism, there's a place in Peter says, and water baptism now saves us as an appeal to God for a clear conscience. Sometimes people have misused that passage of Scripture, say, well, water baptism saves us. No, it's an action of obedience. If we add anything to what Jesus did for us on the cross, then all of a sudden we're into works righteousness. But what I'm trying to say is that we want to be water baptized because we are a follower of Jesus. Jesus said, repent and be baptized. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. He's saying, I want you to do this not because he's some control freak, but Jesus wants us to do this because he wants for us to come into all that he has for us. I've heard of stories about people coming up out of the waters of water baptism and being released in the gift of tongues because, again, with obedience comes blessing. I, I've talked to people, and they'll look back and says that was a, a, a turning point in my walk with Jesus. Things that people were struggling with when we obey, I keep coming back that with obedience comes blessing. So if you haven't yet been water baptized, I want to appeal to you. I want to I want to just, with all that I have, Paul says, I urge you, I, I want you to do what God is asking of you. And, you know, my time as lead pastor is growing short, but that doesn't mean as long as I have life and breath, I'm going to talk about the fact that we need to be doing what Jesus has asked us to do. He says, repent and be baptized. Change the way you think and act. And that is such an important part of this. Well, let me ask a couple of other things. First of all, what is the biblical pattern? And this is where things start to get a little bit skewed. So we said that here at Sunshine Hills that we have always endeavored to follow the pattern that Jesus put forward in his scripture. So when the theologians get together, they ask this question. They will say, how do we know if a teaching is, quote, orthodox or right? There's three things that they look for. One was, was it clearly articulated and talked about by Jesus? And we can check that. Yes, it was. Was it practiced by the early church? And we read through the book of Acts that in, in, in Acts chapter 2, following Peter's great sermon there on, on Pentecost, that thousands came and it says they heard, they believed, and they were water baptized. We see that we see the Ethiopian eunuch that is in Acts chapter 8. We see this with Cornelius and company. And we see that in the scriptures where Paul just makes the assumption that all followers of Jesus, all believers are going to be water baptized. 
And I want you to know, I, I'm saying this with everything I have. I want you to be water baptized, not so we can add you to the record. It doesn't make you a member of the body of Christ or this local church. It is an act of obedience where you are making a public declaration that you are a follower of Jesus. And with obedience comes blessing. Why is it important? Because Jesus said that we should do this. Now, the last part of all of this is some of you maybe grew up in a tradition uh, in a, either a Roman Catholic church or in a high Anglican church, and this is one of the, the places where people stumble, and they'll say, well, I was already water baptized. And I'll say, well, when was that? He says, well, I was baptized as an infant. Now, sometimes people in my situation will say, well, that doesn't count or, you know, how stupid or how foolish. Well, here's what I've said when I talk to people who, who maybe were, were water baptized as an infant. I will say, isn't it wonderful that your earthly parents, they were making a statement of faith on your behalf. They were saying, I want my son or I want my daughter to become a part of the body of Christ. But that infant has not yet been able to make a personal choice to be water baptized. So instead of saying, well, it doesn't count or it's not significant, I come back and says, that's a wonderful thing. But Jesus, the model is repent and be baptized. So here's what I have said to people that, yes, your parents made a statement for you. But now the reality is that we as somewhere where we can make a personal choice, whether we're 5 or 10 or 15 or 60 or 80, we make a conscious choice to say, I accept what Jesus did for me on the cross. He died for my sins, and I believe that he, I will be resurrected in newness of life as his Holy Spirit works both spiritually but also someday in glory. So if you're saying, well, I've, I was already water baptized, I come back to the pattern of Scripture I want to end where we began this whole thing. We began this whole thing by saying, we want to follow what the Word of God says. The Word of God says people came, they repented of their sins, they were water baptized. So in closing, I want to come back again to say, we celebrate this. So this morning, we have some people who are going to be going into those waters of baptism, but it, you're never too old. And you might say, well, I'm kind of embarrassed. Well, I get, I get that. But what's interesting is Jesus went all the way to, cross, to the cross for you. And let me tell you, it's been one of my most favorite things to do as a pastor is to, is to water baptize people. Because you know what? When people go into the water and they come up, people are saying, oh, look at how wet they are. No, they're just rejoicing. We clap. We hoot. We holler. Why? Because we want you. We want every one of us to be people who are doing what Jesus has asked us to do. Why water baptism? Jesus commanded it. Why water baptism? It's a statement of obedience. Why water baptism? It's a statement of faith that as we identify with him, that he is changing us, as the word of God says, from glory to glory. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our great example and how you said permit this for all righteousness. And so the Bible talks about the fact that as you went down under the water, as you came up, that you heard the voice from heaven, from God the Father, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then the Spirit descended upon you as a dove, as a sign and a symbol, and people were able to see that this was the beginning of your earthly ministry that is still going on today. Lord, I would pray, God, for, for people who've been water baptized. Lord, I pray that this has stirred them in their hearts to, to remember that commitment, that public declaration, because we want to be your authentic witnesses. And Lord, if there's somebody out there that's saying, oh, I don't need to do that, or it's not important, how do we say that something Jesus, you commanded, is not important? I pray that they would step out in faith. They come against the, the, the rationalization and the lies of the evil one that wants to rob people who are followers of Jesus from this important thing. Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to cooperate with all that you have. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in closing, I want to just say we, we do this, and um, you maybe you're watching all of this and says, well, boy, I didn't even know about this water baptism thing. And the Ethiopian eunuch, he was reading the scriptures, and he was saying, I don't understand this. Paul, so, sorry, got God by his Holy Spirit sent Philip, and Philip sees this guy on the chariot, 
He says, do you understand what you're reading? He says, I don't even know what's going on. And it says that Philip talked to him about Jesus. And I want you to know, I want to be a Philip today. Maybe you haven't made a decision for Jesus. He died on the cross for you. He was God's son, perfect, the sinless Lamb of God. He was put on a Roman cross. He was crucified. He died. They buried him. He rose from the dead. And you can say, Jesus, I need you in my life. It's not about what you do. It's what he's done for you. So I want to pray. If you're inviting Jesus into your heart, just pray along with me, dear Jesus. I know that I need your help. Dear Jesus, I accept that you died on the cross for me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you rose in power to prove that you were the conqueror of death and the grave and that you ever live and you want to live with me and help me to walk and be like you. Lord, I pray, God, that as I invite you into my heart, that I know that I am now a son or daughter of the Most High. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's make it a great year. Well, here we are at the second ordinance that Jesus put in place. We just talked about water baptism. An ordinance is, is stronger than a command. And the idea there is Jesus was saying, these are things I want you to do. And there's only two in the entire Old, uh, New Testament. One is repent and be baptized. And he says that I want you to remember my death till I come again by celebrating the Lord's Supper, my supper, by this, this last time that we're together before his death, burial, and resurrection. The Bible has several different places. One was Paul when he was writing to the Corinthians, and he was saying, on the same night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread and he broke it in the cup, and he did this, and, and he gives some very specific instructions. But I want to come from the, the gospel account today. Jesus, it says in John chapter 13, it says, And having loved them, he loved them to the, the uttermost. He loved them to eternity. We read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read how Jesus, it says that he gathered together with his disciples, and knowing where he was going to face, he, he wanted to be able to say, I'm going to do this. And he said, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he blessed it. He says, this is my body which is broken for you sacrifice jesus came in the flesh we just celebrated christmas jesus coming in the flesh jesus takes the bread and he break and he breaks it and he said this is my body which is offered for you and so i'm going to just open this up here and again at home you can take a wafer or a piece of bread or a cracker but this is a representation of the body of Jesus Christ that was nailed to the cross, and by his death, your sins are forgiven. So let's do what Jesus did. He broke it, and he blessed it. So Jesus, we thank you that you loved us so much, that you came to earth to die. We thank you that the Bible says that you took upon yourself the sins of the whole world, including mine. As I was talking with somebody just, just yesterday, he says, well, I, I hope my sins are forgiven. I says, if you came to Jesus, his, he has forgiven you your sins. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you eat it, you remember my death, which is where the victory was won. So, Lord, we now take this. We do it in remembrance of you and in obedience. Would you join me? Then Jesus says in the same manner that he took the cup and he, he blessed. He says, this is my blood. It's the new covenant, the new agreement. The old ha has now been perfectly fulfilled. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy or undo the law, but to perfectly fulfill it. Well, the blood of the sacrifices of all of the, the rams and the lambs and the bullocks and, and the doves have now been made perfect. Jesus sacrificed once for all and that his blood paid the ultimate price. It is, in my vocabulary, the currency of salvation. As we drink together, we remember that Jesus died for us and that he rose triumphant. Let's pray. Lord, as we hold this representation of your blood, we are grateful, Lord Jesus, 
that you died for us and that we thank you that you purchased us, you redeemed us from the law and from sin and darkness and that we are your children because of the fact that you redeemed us and we thank you for your precious blood that at the blood of Jesus that that darkness must flee because they know it is the representation of the final sacrifice. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, in remembrance of Jesus, let's drink it. Let's do it in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, as we come, this will be the last communion that we will do, at least corporately, in 2021. Lord, we thank you that you always come to us from our future. As we, we end 2021, as we enter 2022, we are accepting the fact that you've already been there before and that you're working our life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.